Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this sunny day we have outside. A little chilly yet, but my name is Sue Weinberger, and I am a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, many times referred to as SPRC. And I've been told recently that a lot of people didn't understand what SPRC stood for. So that is the Staff Parish Relations Committee. And the reason I am up here this morning is to officially welcome Pastor Cherie Forat to our services and to our church here this morning. On behalf of our church, <laughs> we do indeed welcome you not only to the city of Beaverdam here, but to our family here at Trinity, and we're very grateful to have you here. And um, I thank the Hospitality Committee for making sure that we did have a little something to present to you this morning. So those are for your office or for your oh, home, wonderful. whichever you so desire. And again, we welcome you to our family here at Trinity. Thank you so much, Sue. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you for wearing name tags. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting each and every one of you as we go through this service and the time ahead. We know that God gathers us up here and we give thanks for God's presence in all the ways that we're gathered together today. Thank you. So glad to have Doug Austin serving as worship host. Thank you very much. Uh, I caught, I, I'm normally, when I go fishing, I catch and release. Whatever I caught this last week, I can't get rid of. But um, <laughs> nevertheless, I will suffer through this and hope you can understand what I say in my baritone bass voice this morning. Anyway, we're all happy that everybody's here, and I'm so pleased that I'm lucky enough to be the first host to work with, with our new pastor. So make sure you meet her this morning. She's a wonderful lady. I haven't talked to her much, but I can already tell we're going to have a wonderful relationship and wonderful words from her in the next number of years that she's with us. So we're very grateful to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. Those that are worshiping with us at the Dicora Golden Living Center through live streaming and also those listening on the radio, we welcome you. So happy to have you with us any way that you can be with us in the electronic means. And at this time we will be singing Gather Us In from the Faith We Sing book 2236. Please stand. Please stand. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the roots and forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall all rise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty, Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. 
Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call the sun new to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. You wish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light is away, but here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Father of love in our flesh and our We are called to go to places we don't know. We look to God for our strength. Our strength is in our Lord, who always goes with us. We walk in faith. Come, let us worship the God who calls us and who walks beside us throughout the journey. Now join me in our opening prayer. Our ever-present strength and help we come this coming in response to a call we have felt in our very bones. We not be sure. We may even be full of doubts and not fully understand how we got here. But we are here. Help us listen with new ears and open hearts. Touch our hearts during this time of worship that we may know your unconditional love not just for the world as a whole, but for us individually. For it is your love that we long for. Amen. Let's join together in our opening song, To God Be the Glory. Higher 
and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory that things he hath
I'd like to welcome the children up here for a minute, please. Come have a seat. Hi, good morning. Hi. Come have a seat, everybody. Gather around. I'm going to stand today. Is that okay? All right, good morning. So we just heard some nice handbells, but right before that, we had what we call here in church the greeting. So while we were doing that, I was thinking of some ways that we greet people. One way is we use our voice. Hi, hello, good morning, buenos dias. Sometimes they're like this, yeah. Hey there. Because maybe we're not so cheerful, right? Depends how we're feeling. Then I was thinking there are some ways we use our body, our gestures to show that we welcome someone. We might do this. Or I might do this to you. Or this to you. Hi. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Or I might do this. Oh, good one. Got some muscle today? Let's see it. There you go. You got one? Oh, there's a good one. Or you might even do gestures like this. <laughs> or you know, there's this one. <laughs> so today, we are going to either, I want you to think, you can either use your voice or you can use one of those gestures. We are welcoming our new pastor today. So think about what you're going to do. Okay? We're either going to say something or you're going to do a gesture, we're going to welcome Pastor Cherie. So stand up with us for a minute. Oh, yes. Good morning. All right, so what do you guys want to do? What are you going to say? Oh, there's a wave. Who wants to say something? Hi. Hi. No, there. No. Hi. There's a hi. hi. There's hi. a high five. Good. All right, so Pastor Cherie, we do um, a little prayer at the end of each children's sermon, and we do a special way that we say amen. Do you guys remember how we do it? Amen. Right? Okay, so, and we are a little bit loud on occasion, okay? It's exciting. But let's take a moment. We're going to quiet our hearts for a minute. We're going to talk to God, so fold your hands up. Austin, look. Here we go. Dear Lord, Thank you for giving us so many ways to welcome people into our hearts, whether we're saying hi or hello or just even a simple wave or a handshake. We open our hearts to welcome new people. Lord, we are so thankful to welcome Pastor Cherie with us today. We know that she will continue to help guide us on our journey with you. And all of God's people say, are you guys ready? Here we go. Amen. Amen. Wow, I have a lot to learn here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, good friends, job. you can walk back to class. Make sure you say good morning to some friends today. Thank you. Wonderful. It is wonderful to have so many children in our church and their families. We thank God that they will be bringing up their children in the Lord's work. This morning's scripture reading is from John 3, verses 1 through 17. <clears throat> now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone... Be born after having grown old. Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God 
without being born of water and spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about the earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> First, I want to say thank you to everybody who has welcomed me here to Beaver Dam and to Trinity Church. You've all been so gracious and patient, helping me through my first days here, getting acquainted with the community, finding my way around the church building. I still need to have the tour of all the church properties this week. I'm looking forward to that. I have served as pastor in many parts of Wisconsin now, and each had its own beauty, its own challenges, and its own culture, each congregation. I served in Milwaukee, where there was a great diversity of people and places and resources, but the people there don't always consider themselves part of the rest of the Midwest. When I lived in Milwaukee, I would say, I was born in Iowa, and somebody would respond, Do you mean Ohio? <laughs> Iowa. Don't know where that is. When I served in Mount Horeb, I was asked during my first week as the pastor there if we could have a carved troll placed at the front of the church because there were trolls everywhere throughout the community. It took me a while to realize that was a joke. It takes some time to get used to each church's sense of humor, and I promise I'll give you a little bit of time to get used to mine. <laughs> I'm in the process now of moving my household from Eau Claire, from a downtown congregation right next to the bridge on campus of UW-Eau Claire that goes across the Chippewa River, it's known to be the coldest spot in Wisconsin, if you look that up. They told me when they knew I was coming to Beaver Dam that I was moving to the Banana Belt. <laughs> I haven't quite experienced the place that way yet. I trust I will one of these days. One thing I already know you have in common with those other United Methodist congregations is that you're a church that cares for its people and its community. You have an exceptionally strong staff and wonderful volunteers who have kept you going through these months of transition. You have lay leadership that has stepped up big time to make it through this time between appointed pastors. And I'm excited to learn about this ministry and learn who each of you are, about your families, about your faith, and all the good ministry that has, has come before I got to this place. So please, when you have a moment, stop in my office over there. You know where it is better than I do, probably right now. Stop in to get acquainted when you have a few moments. Week by week, we need to learn about each other and work out how we understand God's call together as a congregation, as pastor and people who are here now, 
and with the people that God will draw here in the future. I'm so grateful that we have as many opportunities as we do to worship together, both on Wednesday and on Sundays, to lift up prayer and praise and let the scriptures soak into us because it's through scripture we get the guidance from God that we need to move together as a faith community. This is a scripture story that Doug read this morning of a Pharisee, a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who was drawn to seek Jesus. Nicodemus went to see Jesus to talk to him in the dark of the night, probably because his reputation wouldn't be enhanced if he was seen seeking out an itinerant preacher who was also known to be a carpenter in Nazareth. And yet Jesus was so compelling. This gospel tells us of his baptism by John the Baptist, his turning water to wine at the wedding in Cana, and further signs he offered in Jerusalem, cleansing the temple and other things indicating he was taking his religious authority on seriously. Nicodemus came to learn more about who Jesus was and to question Jesus about the source of his power. Jesus' response was something Nicodemus could not understand because Jesus had a completely different understanding of faith in God. His faith, his power, came through God's divine spirit. Faith for Nicodemus, on the other hand, was grounded in a series of human rules he thought he could use to climb up, climb up to God and be rewarded with eternal life by following all the rules. That expect, that's an expectation of human beings to do all the right things just to receive God's love. That was Nicodemus' way of thinking. Instead, Jesus' message was that God's love is immediately available for everyone and God is active in offering that love at all times. God so loved the world that God's only Son was given up so that we are not condemned. God loves us, and that love is available to everyone. Eternal life is available to all who believe. That's Jesus' message, and it's so simple it's hard to understand. Jesus could see that Nicodemus could not understand, so he compared God's love to a to different phenomena we have no control over, like wind and birth. Those are things we simply respond to. We don't make them happen. That's the message Jesus came to give all of us. God sent Jesus and gave us new life through him because when we accept him, we become new people and have a new way to live in the world, trusting God. Now, for some of us, that can happen overnight. And for others among us, it takes a whole lifetime of working on making our lives new through our belief in Christ. But we never have to earn God's love. It's there for us, even if we don't deserve it. The good news that Jesus came to give us when we manage to understand better than Nicodemus is that even when we get lost in the dark, God's light comes looking for us. When we become aware that the light is there even for us, we know that it'll come and find us wherever we've gotten ourselves lost in the darkness. In a United Methodist way of thinking, God loves people even before they know it. That's John Wesley's understanding of prevenient grace. Wesley taught that God loves us and claims us even before we know it. God's grace is love and mercy given to us by God simply because God wants us to have it, not because we've done anything at all to deserve it. When we come to trust that love of God being there for us, we can be more confident about acting as God's people in the world and becoming fully the people God created us to be. That takes a lot of trust because living as God's people in the world is a big job that involves the heavy lifting of making big changes in our lives. 
Now, I'm still in the midst of moving households from Eau Claire to here in Beaver Dam, and lots of heavy lifting is involved in that. At the end of this past week, some strong Methodists in Eau Claire were in the basement where I was living in Eau Claire, trying to get the treadmill up the stairs out into the garage. Ever tried to carry a treadmill? It took, took a whole team of people, some at the top of the treadmill pulling it up the stairs, some at the bottom pushing it up, and just when they thought they'd gotten it under control and had it almost all the way up the stairs, the weight shifted back to the downstairs. The downstairs people suddenly had all the weight, but the upstairs people never let go, never let go. All of those folks got it out of the basement with the help of God, got it all the way to the garage. And that's what happens when we're trying to do ministry together. I suspect you have discovered in the last months that doing ministry to together often involves heavy lifting. And you can hardly get your hands on it. And the weight shifts and it moves. And it takes all of us hanging on to it together, working together, and knowing that whenever we do something for God, God is our partner and continues to hang on to the load and help us carry it wherever it needs to go. I trust that in the time ahead, we're going to take all the time we need to get acquainted with each other. We have the season of Lent to get acquainted with each other before we get all the way to the new life that Easter brings. That's God's promise to all of us that there will be new life as we walk through this season together. New life for all of us, given by God because God loves us so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, May we rejoice together to walk as God's people. Amen. Amen. We're glad now to hear from our chancel choir. They're going to sing My Savior.
so very much, choir. That was beautiful. We we're blessed this morning. Let's join Let's together in our closing hymn. Yes. Yes. Freely, freely. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received, freely, freely as we go from this place may we go trusting the love of God goes before us and lives within us we can take on the world and share that with the world with God's help Amen <laughs>